All right, so uh, <clears throat> here what I would like to say, first of all, these uh, uh, points, we call them decision nodes, all right? Because um, uh, these are, uh, well, I mean, not all of them, but here the decision nodes are, A is a decision node because it's the point where Mr. Brown is making a choice, right? And so here C is also a decision node. What else? D is also a decision node and E is also a decision node. So these are decision nodes, all right? Decision nodes, uh, meaning the point of, a point in the game where uh, one of the players uh, is making a choice. So these are, uh, this is what we mean by decision node. And then there are other dots, right? And the others, we call them terminal nodes. Terminal. Uh, well, as the name suggests, these are terminal because the game is basically over. I can represent them as, as a set. Uh, the, 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 the game is over at these uh, nodes. And so when the game is over, when, for example, the game reaches this uh, node B, so C is a decision node, a D and E are decision nodes, the rest are uh, terminal nodes because I assume the game is over there, all right? So these are the terminal nodes. The terminal nodes also tell me the time where the outcomes will be realized, all right? So in, in point F, what will happen is that, well, Mr. Brown, decided to open a restaurant and he actually decided to open a restaurant in downtown Toronto downtown and Mr. Green also decided to open a restaurant in Toronto downtown. So this is the outcome. All right, this is what F represents. However, B for example represents that Mr. Brown did not invest uh, on, an, on a restaurant. He in fact just opened up a hedge fund. All right, well obviously if you like we can, well, you can, you can say, well, what about Mr. Green? I mean, you, Mr. Green can still open a restaurant. Well, yes, that's true. So what you can do then, you can say downtown Toronto and Richmond Hill. And so I have two more. So this is uh, B. Um, I have F, G, H, K uh, and M, N, N, if you like. All right. So that means I have... Um, so B is not a terminal node anymore because B is now a decision node, right? It's a decision node for Mr. Green. And however, I have two more terminal nodes, which is M and N. All right. So one question is like, why? I mean, what is the difference uh, or does it make any difference whether to put this or the previous version? Well, it's totally up to you as a modeler. As a modeler, do you sort of want to uh, tell about how Mr. Green is going to behave once Mr. Brown decides a hedge fund investment or not? Well, I mean, you don't have to put this part in, into this game because once Mr. Brown decides uh, a, a hedge fund investment and once this information is, is sort of a public information, Obviously, Mr. Green knows that there's going to be no competition, so therefore he's going to invest, or I'm going to, I'm sorry, he's going to open his restaurant anywhere he likes. So it's going to be like a single person decision problem from this moment on, right? So it's totally up to you whether as a, uh, a designer, uh, whether you want to say something about Mr. Green regardless of the Mr. Brown's choice or not, okay? So both structure, is, is fine. I mean, I, I can't say one is true and the other one is false. Both are perfectly fine, depending on the environment you would like to analyze. But if this is the game tree you're analyzing, well, then the decision nodes, as I said, A, B and C, all right, B and C, and D and E, all right? Some of those belong to agent uh, uh, Mr. Brown. Some of them belongs to Mr. Green, however. So we're going to be careful about this. And in fact, yes, we can be careful, careful about it. So for example, Mr. Brown's decision notes are A, right? And also C. Uh, however, Mr. Green's decision notes are 
are B and D and E. So one thing to sort of uh, notice, and it's important, is when we draw a game tree, we do not uh, um, use the same decision node for two person. That's very important. A decision node belongs to one and only one person. All right, so that's sort of a rule uh, that we use when we construct game tree. Let me repeat, a decision node one decision node cannot belong to two different players or three different players. One decision node is just for one person. All right, so therefore, AC does not appear here, BDE do not appear here. Okay, uh, the terminal nodes, however, uh, well, they are common, all right, because those nodes are the points where the game is over. So therefore, you know, once the game is over for me, it's also over for you, all right? So here you may say, but when player A, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Brown, I'm sorry, makes a move on hedge fund, uh, the game is going to be over here. So uh, whether the guy, the, the, the Mr. Green chooses downtown Toronto or Richmond Hill doesn't matter. The game already is over for him. Yes, but the thing is when I represent uh, this in this game tree, I put this end of the game at M and N. So M and N is going to give Mr. Brown exactly the same uh, utility, same preference, right? He doesn't care about whether the, uh, whether the Mr. Green opened it downtown on Richmond Hill. Oh, just one thing, by the way, um, uh, I, I am sort of taking this back. I said, remember, uh, Mr. Brown doesn't care whether Mr. Brown, uh, Green is going to open in downtown or Richmond Hill. But you know what? Uh, I mean, this doesn't have to be the case, right? Mr. Brown can be a type of guy who is envy of, so he, he invests on hedge fund, but nevertheless, he doesn't want his opponent to be so happy. I don't know. Um, so therefore, whether his opponent, Mr. Green, opens a restaurant in downtown Toronto or Richmond Hill, he may be happier in one decision and sort of worse off in the other. So therefore, this outcome may be more or less preferable than this outcome for him. That's totally up to how you define the preferences over the outcomes. I'm not there yet, all right? So therefore, therefore, let me conclude once again, B is not a terminal node for anybody. So if, 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 if a node is a terminal node, it's a common. It, it means the game is over for everybody. So this is common, let me say it. And this is uh, player specific. And by which you, you know what I mean. Right? So each player has one and only, I mean, uh, each decision node belongs to one and only one player. All right, what else? This is the game tree, as I mentioned. Um, these are sort of the branches, right? So therefore, this is why we, so, you know, there are a lot of branches. But one nice thing is that, you know, the sequence of branches leads to a decision node. And in fact, let me put it this way. In the game tree, each node, whether it's a decision node or terminal node, doesn't matter. Each node can be reached at most one way. All right, it, it cannot be reached by two ways. Uh, let me put it this way. So a bit more abstract game tree. So I have this, I have this. Something like this. You got the idea, all right? So these are terminal nodes, let's suppose. So the decision nodes are like A, B, C, D, E, F. So these are decision nodes, so this is F. And here, as you see, the decision node D is reached in two different ways. This is the first way, and this is the second uh, path. All right, when I say way, I mean path. Uh, so this is not a game tree representation. Uh, we will never ever have a game tree representation this way. All right, so, uh, that's very important, and there are technical reasons for this. I'm not going to dive into this at this uh, episode. But once again, each decision node or each terminal node can be reached one and only one path. 
All right? So that's very important. So each node can be reached only in one way or path. All right. Well, obviously the initial decision node, right? Uh, here it is the A. The initial decision node, uh, there's no path that basically, it is the beginning of the game, right? So therefore, uh, it doesn't really violate this anyway. All right. So outcomes, well, once again, uh, each terminal node basically tells us the outcomes. All right. So when we say outcome, we actually mean the terminal node. So here, the terminal node, again, H means uh, Mr. Brown, uh, decided to open a restaurant in Richmond Hill and Mr. Green uh, decided to open a restaurant in downtown. So they're opening a restaurant in two different locations. So here N is an outcome where Mr. Brown invested on hedge fund, but Mr. Green invested on, uh, opened up a restaurant in Richmond Hill. So this is another outcome. All right. So the outcomes are basically the terminal nodes. What about the information sets? All right, so remember the information is basically about what do these players know when they play the game. So that's very important. So, and this is basically exactly why I did uh, sort of constructed this game tree, because if you change the information structure, the game tree will also change. So I did not maybe explain to you, but now it is the time to do it. I, I draw this game tree because the information uh, structure that I assumed or in my mind was the following. So Mr. Brown, when he chooses whether to invest on a restaurant or not, he doesn't know, right? He doesn't know whether Mr. Green is going to open up a restaurant in Richmond Hill or downtown Toronto. So his decision uh, cannot depend on uh, Mr. Green's action because he will he does not observe it. All right. So for that reason, I put Mr. Brown's decision note first. And obviously, I think it is clear from the story. You first decide on whether to hedge fund or a restaurant investment and then decide where to invest, right? The opposite seems awkward. I mean, if you, in, if you decide on investment on Richmond Hill and then hedge fund investment makes no sense, right? I'm assuming here is that you have a specific amount of money and you cannot invest both restaurant and hedge fund, all right? So it's either one or the other. Okay, so therefore, A moves first opens a restaurant or, or, or hedge fund investment. If it is a hedge fund, remember, Mr. Green is, is going to open a restaurant downtown or Richmond Hill. That's the end of the game in this part. In the lower side, if Mr. Brown decides to open a restaurant, uh, well, remember, he decides to open it at downtown and Richmond Hill. Now, the second piece of information, which is crucial to analyze this game and, and for the structure of the game tree, when Mr. Brown decides to where to open his restaurant, does he know where Mr. Uh, Green is going to be opening a restaurant? All right. So remember, my first step was, should I invest hedge fund or restaurant? When I make this decision as Mr. Brown, I don't know my opponent, Mr. Green, is going to do. So, all right. So I'm sort of blindfolded and, and make a move. I make a move. Um, say a few months later, I decide to open a restaurant in downtown uh, and or Richmond Hill, right? Um, and I have to make the decision because, you know, the land I'm, or, or, the, or the store that I'm planning to rent, he says, well, he got another offer from somebody else. And so I have to make the decision. So the question is, when I make this decision, am I going to be making another blindfolded decision? Uh, or am I going to be perfectly... Uh, uh, informed about Mr. Green's uh, decision. So here, I assumed that Mr. Brown uh, does not know anything about Mr. Green's decision. All right. So for that reason, I put Mr. Brown first here. So the C belongs to Mr. Brown for that reason. All right. If, for example, it was the case that Mr. Green does not know Mr. Brown's uh, uh, move, 
Well, then I would put Mr. Green here. All right, very good. So, well, then second Mr. Green. So he has two decision nodes, D and E. So there's a third piece of uh, information which is relevant for this game, for the analysis and for the structure. What does he know about Mr. Brown's move? Uh, according to this tree, right, it's like sequential move, you know, one moves and then the other, etc. So does he really know about uh, Mr. Brown's choice? I mean, uh, when Mr. Green decides to open a restaurant in Richmond Hill, uh, does he know that uh, Mr. Brown actually rented a, a, a location in, in Richmond Hill or not? So this information is very important, obviously. So um, if he knows, if he knows Mr. Brown's decision, I'm going to leave the game tree as this. All right. And that's going to be it. However, if Mr. Green is also making a blindfold uh, um, a folded decision, meaning when it's his time to choose, he doesn't know whether Mr. Green, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Brown uh, chose downtown or, or will choose downtown or will choose Richmond Hill. So if it is a blindfolded decision for him too, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to change the structure of this game. What I'm going to do instead, I'm going to circle these two decision nodes. And sometimes some textbooks just put dots here instead of circling. All right. I'll do both. I mean, sometimes I'm going to put, you know, dots in between these two decision nodes. Sometimes I'm going to circle. All right. So what do we mean by this? We call this, by the way, information set. Information sets. Okay. So what does it tell me? Well, it tells me exactly what I told you. When Mr. Green makes a choice decision to open a restaurant in downtown Toronto or Richmond Hill, he cannot observe uh, whether his opponent, Mr. Brown, decided to open in downtown or in Richmond Hill. So therefore, these two decision nodes are in the same information set in the sense that he is blindfolded. He cannot see in which decision node exactly he is at. So he's choosing an action, but am, am I choosing it here or here? That I don't know. Does it matter? Obviously it does, because if my opponent opened a, a restaurant in downtown, probably I don't want to open a restaurant in downtown. I may prefer to Richmond Hill. Remember, the competition is going to be very uh, tough. However, if, if I know that my opponent is going to open a restaurant in Richmond Hill, in that case, I actually may prefer to open a restaurant in downtown. All right. So therefore, depending on my opponent's action, I may change my reaction. But well, these two nodes are in the same info set, which means I'm blindfolded. I don't know what my opponent did. So my decision is tougher in a sense. So we incorporate this informational uh, uh, piece, I'm sorry, this piece of information into the game tree by circling these information uh, decision nodes. All right. So one crucial thing, we will talk about these information sets, etc. later in more detail when we talk about sequential move games. But an information set, info sets, let me just briefly call it, info sets never include decision nodes of more than one player. I mean, my the, 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 so info set is my info set versus your info set. All right, our info. So we cannot have joint information set in a game tree. That's critical. Okay. So basically, that's it. That's how we uh, sort of structure a, a game format. Um, so in the next episode, I am going to talk about few other hypothetical examples. I'm not going to give the full story, but I'm going to sort of draw some game trees and sort of tell you what they mean. Um, so I'll see you next time.